Oh. Yep. Um, always great to get a win, especially on homecoming. Uh, we knew uh, it wasn't going to be easy, especially with the opponent coming off of a bye week. Um, plenty of time to rest up and game plan. This did a nice job of uh, finding a way to come make it a game. I uh, jumped out to a 17 point, um, point lead. Uh, turnovers uh, ultimately led to them come chipping their way back, gave up some explosives on the defensive side. Uh, but again, um, did not panic. Uh, we found a way to muster up a drive offensively and we found a way to win the game in the end uh, when in a four minute, two minute situation. So um, not, not pleased at all with uh, the lack of discipline in a lot of areas, too many penalties at critical times. Um, you know, there were some calls that, you know, um, that I, I, I just felt like were um, not in line with, with consistency. I'll just say that, but I'll never uh, blame the refs on anything. You know, I just wanted to see some consistency with some calls and what was being called. But uh, outside of that, we're four and two. Um, we're building, we're learning how to win games. Um, and, and we just got to continue to get better and, and close out the season on a strong note. Mm-hmm. Yeah, slowly but surely. Um, you know, I, I I just like to see us finish stronger. Um, you have to have a 17-point lead. You know, you got to learn how to uh, put your foot on the throat and crush it. That's the next step. Um, and I think the guys feel that. Um, but again, you know, this is a game of ebbs and flows. We're learning to stay steady through those moments, not to panic, um, continuing to believe in one another. And uh, we're slowly getting there. I think um, you have a, a unit that's starting to see the fruits of our labor and how we grind and how we work and how we preach on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm hearing, you know, guys coaching each other on the sideline, you know, during the ebbs and flows of the game. Um, it's really encouraging. So we're growing in that capacity. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's still we're in the middle of the season and October is all about movement. You know, if we're going to be in this thing at the end, we got to win out October. So we have, uh, you know, um, another home game or really two home games to close it out. But next week is going to be another opponent we got to get ready for and we got to find a way to win. Uh, yeah. No, um, we talked about it. And, you know, he felt like he was in a good headspace. Um, clearly, you know, um, the fumble or, you know, the fumble can't happen. He's got to protect the football. We talked about that. He's just way too careless and reckless with the ball, you know, when he's making his moves in, in the pocket. And it caught up to him. Um, and you just can't throw a ball out there carelessly. And, and those are the things that we're talking about, those momentum shifts. And that can kill a, t a team's morale. So we're going to have a long discussion about it. But we... We need everybody in that room to be successful. That's a, a combination between Stretch and DJ. And uh, we have to go back to him because we're still going to have to use him for the rest of the year. And we've got to keep his confidence going. We've got to believe in him. And um, he was able to go in there and, and find a way to win the game by scoring that touchdown. And uh, we just got to continue to talk to DJ about protecting the football, making great decisions, take what the defense gives you. If it's not there, run it. If it's, if it's uh, don't take a bad sack, but more importantly, you gotta protect the program. You know that's what everybody's livelihood depends on you protecting the football. Consistency, consistency. You know, I give them an opportunity to say, hey, if you want to be that guy, be consistent. And that's in every situation. Until I see that, we're going to do what we've been doing to win ball games, and it's, and it's helped us. You know, um, Stretch had an amazing spring. He worked his, his ass off through the summer. He earned that starting job. And Draylon, you know, missed a spring, and he's still working through it. And um, until I see somebody really grab it by the throat, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, and that's what I feel comfortable with because, you know, each guy has something different they bring to the table. And um, you know, stretch is a little banged up, 
but uh, he has an understanding of the offense and and he knows where to go in certain situations. Um, whereas, you know, Draylen depends on his athleticism and that's great at times, but also it's a high risk, high reward at times. I think you saw that. So with those, we got to hone that in. And it's not always about hitting the home run. You know, you got to you got to manufacture your runs. You got to get base hits, and that's being efficient on first down, second down, and getting the first down. Getting that first first down was preached all all week long. Once we get that first first down of every drive, it leads to points, and it builds confidence, and it builds momentum. So, understanding that, and if he locks in and he and he gets it, he can be a demon. <laughs> you know, but until that time, we're going to continue to do what we've been doing. Yeah. Well, our defense, they've been together for quite some time. I'm Ro Beard, again, um, with 10 tackles, uh, continues to shine. Um, they've been resilient. They're, they're, um, they, they, they have the same coaches over the last three years. And uh, we've added some pieces here and there. But they've been in those tight situations. They understand where the offense is at times. And they're a little bit ahead of the offense. And they're, it's complimentary football. Um, of course, we would like to have games where we can blow teams out, but we're just not there yet. We, we're not there yet, um, and, and that's okay. You know, we, we still have to learn. We're going to look at this and be critical of ourselves and understand that, you know, for us to be true champions and, and, and to really um, be a threat, we've got to learn how to separate ourselves and continue to keep the gas on the, on, on the pedal and, again, take the heart out of a team. Um, but we're growing through that, and that's going to take time. Well, I want them, my team to understand. I want them to be proud of the work that they put in. Um, to, to find a way to win after the momentum shift, it, it, that's, a big, that's a big step. And it, you can't sweep that under the rug. You know, typically when you have a young team, they'll, they'll feel the, the, that moment and they'll, they'll, they'll panic and they'll find a way to lose the game. Whereas we've been in enough tight ball games now, we're battle tested and we're starting to understand that. Um, but with the same token, we're, we have to understand, listen, we can't have penalties at certain times. We can't turn the ball over at certain times. And that's going to be the maturity of this team. We've got to get better from this week to next week and the next week to the following week. And we, we'll see, you know, where we're at in this thing because we're not playing championship football right now. And uh, we're finding ways to win, you know, but it's not championship football. We've got to learn how to flip that switch and break through that next step to play championship football uh, in the month of October. And it's, it's a wonderful opportunity that we have presented for us that we were fortunate to find a way to win, but we can still look at the mistakes and grow from that. We've got to grow from that. So um, that's where we are. And I'm hoping that you know next week we'll have the same crowd next week that was here today. Um, it was great. Uh, would have loved for it to have been packed, <laughs> you know, for the entire game, not after halftime when the bands left. But, um, you know, it, we've got a, we've got a group, a, a special group. And I think, you know, I want our fan base to really embrace that. I don't know if they really love football. I, do, I just don't know. I mean, I've, I've been here for three years, and there's only been a couple games that they come to, um, and, and that many people, and, and, and be excited. But I don't know if they truly love the game, because we are winning. You know, we're finding ways to win. I think it is entertaining. So um, I just encourage people to come out and really support our student athletes, because it makes a big difference when you're cheering on third downs and making noise and the energy. You know, it's, it's hard. 
as coaches, as hard as players to constantly build up that energy, you know, and we need our, we need our home crowd. And if, you know, they don't find it entertaining, then, hey, I don't, I don't know what to say. But I, I thought that Big Blue, um, our fans, um, I really would love for them to embrace us and, and to support us no matter who we play. It doesn't have to be another HBCU, you know. It doesn't have to always be a party where there's liquor and wings and all that in the parking lot. I get it. I've been there. But if you're a real fan of football and you're really supporting Tennessee State football student athletes, come in the game and then support us and we'll all party at the end. So I just found that to be interesting um, considering where we are, what's at stake, what's on the line, that it wasn't um, uh, a, a full attendance during the entire course of the game. So that's all, that's all I have to say. Um, yeah, yeah, well, they played last week. He played last week. He's dealing with an, an injury right now. Um, we're, he's, we're trying to rest him, um, but he'll, he'll be back with hopefully by next week or the following week. Okay. okay, good. All right, thank you guys. Have a great night. Go Big Blue.